Last week, you know that uh, we have a special program for you this morning, an opportunity to hear from Christian Business Intersection. Uh, we played you a little video last week to kind of get you excited about it, but even better, we have real flesh and blood folks who are going to come and share with you not just a story, but this is God's story. This is something that God is doing in our region, something God's doing in our midst, and he's, for whatever reason, decided to include you in this grand scheme of his. And so I just encourage you to open your ears, your eyes, your heart this morning and listen for what God would have you do in response to the opportunities that are here. Uh, Gil is the one who leads and who has crafted and oversees Christian Business Intersection. So he, amongst the team here today, is going to take the lead. Uh, Gil has a business background, a pastoral background, and has been working with our citywide movement for some time. He and his wife, uh, Dina, also are very involved at Rock of Roseville with a prayer initiative and training men and women of prayer all across our region, including here at this church. So, Gil, thank you so much for coming and sharing with us this morning. All right. I want to thank all of you and Pastor Dan for inviting CBI and the regional marketplace ministries that are here. Uh, we're here today because we want to honor you. We call this our Marketplace Sunday. And uh, many churches will have a Mother's Day, they'll have a Father's Day, they'll have a Veterans Day, Missionary Day. Well, this is Marketplace Sunday because we want to honor those of you who have been working in the marketplace. So a little bit about who CBI is. CBI is Christian Business Intersection, and it's comprised of Sacramento's regional marketplace ministries. And these ministries are led primarily by business people, people who want to see your faith integrated into the place where you work. And not only that, but we also understand the connection that is necessary and important and vital in order for you to be able to, uh, con you know, uh, have that peer relationship with others that are, that are like-minded. We also believe that Marketplace Sunday is going to bring about the movement as one. We believe that the Marketplace moving together as one will create an ultimate impact for the kingdom of God. And that is the message for this morning, and that is ultimate impact your ultimate impact as individuals and as a church. So each of us have an appointed assignment that God has given to us. And if we are not working in that appointed assignment that God has given to us, and we're leaving a void, a void in the body of Christ, which actually leads to an inability for a particular part of the body to actually reach its ultimate impact. So it's important for each of us to understand that we have a place. Each of you have a specific place that God has called you to. And unfortunately, the marketplace has been overlooked for centuries, literally. So the fact is, we need you. Every single one of you are important. We, we need a complete and fully functioning body of Christ. And the only way that a body can reach its ultimate impact for God that he has designed it for is that when everybody knows what they're supposed to do and they can find that calling that he has given to them. Now, as a general rule, when you first meet somebody, it's usually your eyes meeting their skin, right? Okay, that's the, unless it's over the phone, that's gonna be the first point of contact. Well, the marketplace, I believe, is the skin of the body of Christ. If you use the body as an analogy, the marketplace is the skin of the body of Christ because that's where people in the world are first meeting Jesus is out in the marketplace. So if the skin is the, is the, is the, um, the, uh, the, you know, if the marketplace is the skin of the body of Christ, when um, you meet somebody, you don't always necessarily know what's going on inside, right? I look at the church and the pastors as the heart of the body of Christ. You don't normally see somebody walk in off the street into a church, right? It may happen fairly often, but that would be kind of the equivalent of someone walking into an open heart surgery, and that's their first point of contact is seeing that person's heart. It's not normal. So what's normal is people meeting Jesus in the marketplace. So check yourself out. If you have skin on, look at your neighbor. If they have skin on, tell them you're an ambassador for Jesus Christ. Check it out. When we all go to heaven, I'm going to show you a verse here in just a moment. But um, in that verse, it says that we're going to plant we're going to plant vineyards and gardens, we're going to build houses, and we're going to labor in the new heaven, new earth. When we get there, let's just imagine that you're already there, and you're working on your house, you're pounding away, you're putting some shingles on, you're making sure they're in the right place and doing, 
you know, making sure they're fastened really tightly. And this thought crosses your mind. And while you're pounding away, you're thinking, wow, I am just not being spiritual enough. I need to be at the feet of Jesus, worshiping him. You think that thought would ever really cross your mind? I don't think so. These are things that God created for human beings to do. We have got to understand that the things that we do out in the marketplace are just as holy or unholy <laughs> as the things that we do in the, in the church. So the thing is, we wouldn't want to take anything unholy into the church, so we need to understand that out in the marketplace, we have a calling. Every single one of us has a calling. Now, I can't go into this section here too deep, but the Hebrew way of thinking, I think, really has it nailed down. Hebrew way of thinking understands that our entire life belongs to and is lived in the presence of God. But there was a Greek mindset that came along about this, uh, a few years later, obviously, but the Greek mindset, Plato being the chief proponent of dualism, he split the universe into two different sections. He said that there was a higher section, which he called the form, and that was superior to what he called the matter, which was temporal and physical. And the one was no good to spend any time in. You wanted to just spend all your time in that higher one. Problem is our Western mindset is saturated in a foundation of Greek thinking. So if we have this mindset that there's two different universes or two different ways of looking at the universe and that one is good and one is not, and the church is where we need to be at all the time, then we go out into the world and we do what we do out there and it's taboo and secular, that doesn't work. The Hebrew mindset looked at the, you know, our lives and understood that we live it in the presence of God. Now, maybe you've heard of some of these statistics, but do you realize, put your, wrap your mind around this for a second, there are over 7 billion people on the planet, right? But there's only about 14 million Jewish people. Okay, so get the ratios here. About uh, less than, actually I think it's less than half of 1% of the world are, are Jewish. But they are so incredibly disproportionately blessed, you would have to take a look at it and realize, wow, that's got to be a God thing. Okay, so there's only 14 million Jews, and yet 20% of them are on Forbes' 400 richest people list. 30% of the Nobel Prizes have been won by Jewish people. 10% of our, of our senators are Jewish. Politics doesn't scare the Jewish people. They know they have a calling to get in there and just do it. They're blessed because they, they understand that they live their whole lives in the presence of God. And then Hollywood is practically owned by, by uh, uh, the, the Jewish nation they, or the Jewish people. The Paramount Studios, Universal Studios, 20th Century Columbia Pictures wasn't even 10% of the list that they either own it or they're in high-level management at each one of these uh, in Hollywood. So my point is, they never struggled with the idea that their daily lives were taboo because it was secular. They didn't feel a need to rush back into the synagogue each and every weekend in order to get cleansed from everything that they did out there. No, they understood that what they did out there was a calling. You are 100% gods, and that includes everything you do every single day. And the body of Christ extends far beyond these four walls right here in church. The body of Christ is alive and well in the marketplace, and I can tell you there's a whole lot more going on out there in the marketplace than happens right here in these four walls. We've got to let go of the old and incorrect paradigm that the work of a vocational pastor, no offense, but I've been a pastor as well, is more, any more blessed or anointed or called than the work of someone whose gift is making money for the kingdom, or teaching, or parenting, or making laws for our society. They are all equally called and equally valid in their place. Now, Paul seemed to have set up a little bit of authority in, uh, in, uh, in, the, in Galatians. He said apostles first, and then prophets, and then teachers. Sorry, Ephesians. Um, but I don't believe that this is necessarily a hierarchy of authority. I believe it's more of an alignment issue. We recognize that certain people have gifts and talents that God has given them, no less valuable than what you have, but we recognize we want to come into alignment with those people so that we can be more effective. Now, the analogy I think of, I feel like God just dropped this down on me a couple nights ago, and that is, when I was in the military, I was taught to put my, take my rifle apart and then put it back together in a very short amount of time. 
But I had to be very, very specific about how I put it together and to make sure that every part was in its place. Because if I didn't have every part in its place, my weapon was not going to be any, would not be effective against the enemy. Every piece had to be in its place, and it had to be perfectly aligned. Otherwise, it was just going to jam, and again, my weapon wouldn't work. So it's very important that we understand that we are all vital to the body of Christ. We all have our place, and not one is greater or, or less than anyone else's. Um, <clears throat> I believe that when we finally figure out that the church goes beyond and we're going to talk about it in just a second, but there's basically seven different, I'll call it cylinders for right now. There are um, seven different cylinders that you can operate off. And if, you're, if your car is going, seven cylinders on a car would be really rough, but let's just, <laughs> but seven cylinders, if it's operating on all seven, you're going to go a lot faster and a lot better than you would on just two or three, right? Well, I believe we've kind of been working just off of one cylinder for centuries, Believing that the church was the one cylinder where we had to, be, had, had to focus all of our time and energy in order to be effective in winning souls for Christ. But I believe that once we have all seven in place and all of them aligned correctly, that, you know, the, I, 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 I picture us, you know, for the last few centuries we've been uh, using a pea shooter because we've only been operating off of one, one uh, cylinder. So we've been shooting at the enemy with a pea shooter. He's been shooting back at us with hellfire missiles. And it's no wonder we just keep getting blown back and blown back and blown back. But I believe when we're all fully and completely aligned, we're going to find out we're a battleship. A battleship that we can begin to start taking territory back. Amen. Thank you. <laughs> all right. So each of us in our proper place and alignment make, make a valuable and effective body of Christ. Every part of the body is needed. And you know, too often, and this, this really kind of irks me, but too often we tend to operate out of our flesh and we resort, we resort to uh, what, I, what I call, it's a fictional hierarchy. God never created this hierarchy. It's our, it, we created it out of our own prejudice, out of our own pride, our own vain imaginations, and that is, I call it positional prejudice. It's the idea that a janitor or a maintenance position is any less than that of a CEO or upper level management. And you know, in Galatians chapter 3, Paul says we are all equal in the body of Christ. And you know, one of the tiniest part of my, my rifle that I had to put in, put in was the firing pin. Little bitty piece. But you know what? If it wasn't there, that weapon was pretty worthless. I could swing it at somebody, but <laughs> not going to help me a whole lot. Every part has got to be in its place and aligned correctly. Every single one of you are needed in order to have a healthy and vibrant body of Christ working here in your local community, in your local church, as well as out there in the marketplace. So, you know, let your janitor and your maintenance person go for about six months. Nobody take their place. In about a week, I think you'll start smelling some things. In about a month, you won't want to come back. I think you'd appreciate the janitor and the maintenance person a whole lot more. Point is, everybody is valuable We've got to understand that. We, we are aware of and we're working on gender prejudice. We're aware of and we're working on racial prejudice. But we're hardly even aware of positional prejudice. We use the language all the time, talking about who's got the higher position. And, but it's about alignment. I think alignment is a better word for us to be looking at. All right, so Isaiah 65 says here that we will build houses and inhabit them. We will plant vineyards and eat their fruit, and we will not labor in vain. These are three things that if I'm still thinking of, of the old paradigm, I'm going to think, God, why in the world did you bring these three things back into the new heaven and new earth? What were you thinking? They're not secular. They're things God expects us to do. We are to work. We are to labor. And whatever you labor at, whatever you put your hand to, do it for the glory of God. Now think about this for a second. Go ahead and go to the next slide. Does this make sense? Three hours for God, 165 hours for the world. You spend about three hours in church every week, but the other 165 hours of the week, you're out in the world. It's not that you spend that out in the world. You are still in the presence of God, and we've got to let that paradigm go. We've, um, you, you've all been called, and unfortunately, we, we've got to stop this idea that when we get them to receive Jesus, we're good to go. We're done. 
It's not the truth. We've got to disciple them. And even discipleship has taken it only so far. We've got to learn to disciple them all the way into fulfilling the Great Commission. The Great Commission, Matthew 28, verse 19, says, Go and disciple all individuals, nations, nations. Wow. Puts a little bit of a different paradigm on that, right? How do you disciple a nation? Now, I do believe you're going to have to disciple individuals in order to, di to disciple a nation, but you're going to have to do that through teaching them that there is more than just receiving Jesus. That is the first step. But then you've got to disciple them into what area are you going to take? And we're going to look at some of the areas that you, you might be involved in already or that um, you're going to be involved in. <laughs> so <clears throat> we can't lead people to the idea that their highest and best calling is to be a pastor or to be a missionary. That's just one of the areas. Let's go ahead and look at those. Um, oh, let me back up just a second. The, the whole point here of this is that you're 100% God's 100% of the time, right? All right, so it doesn't matter where you're at, what you're doing, you're in the presence of God, so keep that in mind. So your workplace, you're still in the presence of God, and you've been called. You have been called. Okay, next slide. Go ahead and go down. All right, so these are areas that you can be called to. Some of you may be called to the area of religion. You may be called to be a pastor. You may be called to be a missionary, and that's okay. You may be called to go find lost souls in the jungles and in the deserts of our planet, but... Just as important are the lost souls in the high-rise buildings sitting in the cubicle wondering what is the point of life, or the business owner who has, has success and has money and has time, but they're still wondering, what's the point? What's my purpose in life? Who's reaching them? As important, just as important as those are also those who sit in government seats trying to make a difference for our nation without the higher calling, wisdom, guidance of an all-powerful deity who loves them and has the right answers. What about the teachers and professors of our educational systems that have been duped into accepting the secular answers that lead them to nothingness? I mean, you think about it. If they've accepted the evolutionary track and the idea there, then, um, wow, I came from nothing. I'm an accident. I'm here for a very short time, and then I go into nothingness. Whew, what a purpose in that. Who's showing them the truth? Who's sharing the truth with them? And then... What about those in media, arts, and entertainment who think that the only way to self-fulfillment is through degrading the beauty of God that, God that he has given to us into satisfying the lust of the flesh? Who's showing them the God of creation? The creator God. Man, you want to wow people? Get a download from God and share that in arts and media and entertainment. That would wow the world. Who's sharing that with them? And then who's going to get the message out to the very core and foundation of our society? The mothers and fathers of our families. Their job creates the foundation of our society. Who's reaching out to them? These are the seven pillars, some call them seven mountains, that basically control our culture and society. Think about it. The worldview, listen really carefully. The worldview that influences these seven areas will have the upper hand in leading our culture one direction or another. The problem is Christians over the last few decades have just backed off. It's like they're afraid of being left behind or it's all going to burn, so just leave it. And who's taken over? The world, in some parts of the country, or parts of the world, it's Islam. But we've just backed off and we've let them do it. It's time to get aligned Get that battleship in order and start taking back territory. Now, though all of these pillars are vital to our culture and our community, there is one that we all come in contact nearly every single day, and that's the mountain of business. And that particular mountain does have one vital resource that all the other mountains need and use, and that's money. So I've got a video that I want us to watch here that's going to shed a little bit of light on what I just said. It was August 1975, and the Lord had given me that day a list of things that I had never thought about before. He said, this is the way to reach America and nations for God. In every city of the world, an unseen battle rages for dominion over God's creation and the souls of people. This battle is fought on seven strategic fronts, looming like mountains.
changes over the culture to shape and influence its destiny. Over the years, the church slowly retreated from its place of influence on these mountains, leaving a void now filled with darkness. When we lose our influence, we lose the culture, and when we lose the culture, we fail to advance the kingdom of God. And now, a generation stands in desperate need. It's time to fight for them and take back these mountains of influence. The mountain of government, where evil is either restrained or endorsed. The mountain of education, where truths or lies about God and his creation are taught. The mountain of media, where information is interpreted through the lens of good or evil. The mountain of arts and entertainment, where values and virtue are celebrated or distorted. The mountain of religion, where people worship God in spirit and truth, or settle for a religious ritual. The mountain of family, where either the blessing or a curse is passed on to successive generations. And the one mountain they all depend on, the mountain that fuels and funds all the other mountains, the mountain of business, where people build for the glory of God, for the glory of man, where resources are consecrated for the kingdom of God, or captured for the powers of darkness. Those who lead this mountain control what influences our culture. The last 50 years, we've seen the most rapid moral decline in history. The culture we inherited from our forefathers is disintegrating before our eyes. What kind of world are we leaving for our children and grandchildren? As long as the business mountain is held by enemies of the gospel, funding for the other mountains will always be constrained, and any efforts to advance the kingdom of God will be hindered. Imagine God's people reclaiming their cities and government, in the arts and entertainment, in the media, in education, in the family, in religious influence, but only limited by their imagination and not by a lack of finances. It's possible, but first, we must take back the mountain of business. God's move to take this mountain back has already begun. Thousands and thousands of business leaders in every major city across the nation are filling arenas to learn from business leaders and hear the gospel of Christ. 90% of people working in the marketplace believe in God. 78% believe spirituality and business mix. 70% say that because of their faith, they find meaning and purpose in life. There are over 56 million Bible-believing Christians working in the marketplace. A vast army of God waiting to be truly engaged in the battle. Yet this strategic army and battlefront has largely been left ignored by the church. More than 90% of church members do not feel they are being equipped or trained by the church to apply biblical faith in their day-to-day -day life. All right. Now, I want to say that it's unfortunate, but there's probably some of you who are sitting out here today who at one point in your life, you might have got really excited, fired up for Jesus, you were ready to go, you felt that the highest and best calling you could have would be to become a pastor or a missionary. And for whatever reason, it didn't quite work out, and you ended up kind of going back to what you thought was a default, back into making money, or teaching, or government, whatever it might be. I'm telling you, and we're all here to tell you as well, CBI representatives, um, why don't you all stand for just a second? And then those of you who are going to be sharing, if you can come and sit on this front row. We're all here to tell you, and this is only about half of us. We can't expect everyone to come out every Sunday, but I appreciate those who are able to make it. We're all here to tell you that you've been doing ministry. You are called and you are in your place of ministry. Now, some of you may be shifting in transition, but you've been doing ministry. You are called and you are valuable. And again, I want to say it very clearly, you're just as valuable, if not more valuable, than the, the pastors and the missionaries that are here in this region or even out in the world somewhere. You are responsible for this region, the marketplace. You are the people in the marketplace that um, are, uh, are, are being that first contact for Jesus. Now, Dan is your leader. You align with him. And as everything comes into alignment with, if, with all the seven mountains, just imagine this. This is a mighty battleship when you put all these together and move forward. And everybody gets aligned and understands that you are important no matter where you're at, you are called. You're ministering in the gospel in your mountain and in your sphere. So today, CBI and, and your church leadership, 
want to honor and recognize each of you who have been called into the ministry and into the workplace. Understand that in the body of Christ, your place is no less or more important than a vocational pastor or missionary. And the only way is together that the body of Christ can fulfill its ultimate impact for the kingdom. And just real quickly, part of my passion came out of the fact that I was a pastor for seven years, and then I went into the marketplace for 12 years, and I did not know that any of these ministries existed. I was out there on my own. I had no one to talk to. My wife didn't really understand a lot of the decisions I had to make. My pastor didn't understand a lot of those decisions I needed to make. But had I known, I would have been part of these, and I would have found that collaboration. I would have found that um, uh, you know, peer group and, and that connection that I needed in order to have someone to talk to that, can, that is on, you know, understands what I'm going through. So it's important. I believe that you need to know that there are people out there who want to help you through your journey and in your ministry. There's people that want to help you integrate your faith into your workplace and people that can help you be more effective in your business and in, in your ministry. So today, those of us here representing CBI, we're going to recognize, honor, and affirm those of you in the Seven Mountains. And just real quickly, and this is the important part, okay, get connected, all right? Make sure you get connected before you leave here this morning. We're going to be out by the tables, um, by the little building over there. Um, so come visit us, talk to us, uh, let's connect. Make sure you connect. There's a ministry for almost everybody. There's a ministry for prayer, uniting women in business, teaching and coaching CEOs and businesses, how to go from success to significance, discovering your highest and best calling, building relationships among the leaders of those seven mountains, finding the right job, helping leaders build strategic prayer teams, providing collaborative work environments, better, building better character, networking with other Christians in business, and revival and evangelism in, at every level within the seven mountains. I think that covers about everybody. So please, make sure you come back there and get connected. Um, so now I'd like to invite those of you up who are going to bless. What we're going to do is we're going to bless each one of the mountains. We're going to ask you to stand up. Now, some of you may stand up for one or two or maybe even three of the different mountains. Totally okay. When your mountain is called out, stand up because we want to bless you and pray for you. And when we come to the prayer part, just I ask everyone else to go ahead and hold your hand out to those who are being prayed over. Got it? All right. Thank you very much. Hi, we're Larry and Lori Hill, and uh, we're representing the Dokamas Project, and uh, we would like to honor those uh, in the mountain of marriage and family. So for this category, we're basically going to invite everyone to stand. So whether you're a mother, a father, a married couple, a grandparent, if you have parents, even, you know what, even, even if you feel like, you know, I'm an orphan and I was never adopted, well, God is your father. And so everybody, please stand, because you all interact with family in one way or another. So, um, and, and we do want to thank you for your, for your unending day-after-day -day focus of investing in your families, whether that's serving your parents or whether that's, you know, serving your kids and, and, and training them and teaching them. So um, we, we thank you for what you're doing that helps to establish a strong foundation for our communities. It's very, very important what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, you are the one and only perfect Father. Thank you for these people who have given the best and poured out their lives into the lives of their children and the families within, the, within their influence. God, you created us for relationship and a strong foundation. Uh, that, that foundation gives us good relationships with each other, and, uh, and we just give you praise and honor for all you're doing in these families, Lord. We thank you so much, and we speak a blessing. We speak hope and joy and life and love for each of these families, Father, that they'd be beacons of, uh, of light for you, a city on a hill, in Jesus' name, amen. Good morning. My name is David Harrison, and I'm the director of of Christian Leadership Institute. Our goal is to help Christians understand the biblical worldview and lead informed by the Bible so that we can make an impact on this country. I challenge the church to lead the nation. I believe that's God's will, God's way, and the future for us. And my uh, objective this morning is A, to honor those who are working in government and uh, as a part of that government to military. I've met well, at least one of you that's in the military, so you would fit that category. So if you work in local, uh, state, or federal government, or if you're in the military, would you please stand? 
First of all, we celebrate you. You are the people that make this country run. You are the people that are the salt and light in the government that we rely so much on for the direction of our country and for the well running of our country. So let us pray for this group of people. Father, we thank you in Jesus' name for these people. We thank you that you have called them to this place and that you're using them and that they have been, they are, and they will be um, a blessing to our government and to this community. Help them, Lord, to increase their influence and touch them and favor them and bless them in specific ways and allow them to take territories for you. Bless them, Father, and encourage them. Never let them forget the greater are you in them than anything they will ever face. In the name of the authority of Jesus Christ, amen. Thank you. You may be seated. Good morning. My name is Chad Romig, and I am one of the servant leaders at E49 Corporation. Um, I'd like to honor those in the mountain of religion this morning. So if you guys can stand up in the mountain of religion, that includes uh, church leaders, church servants, nonprofits, parachurch organizations. Don't be shy, stand up. All right, uh, those of you that staff volunteers working for the glory of Jesus, uh, thank you for your diligence and your hard work for the kingdom of God. And uh, join me as we pray for these guys. Father, these are the men and women who have been called to you to serve you and deliver your message of love and service to all who receive it, whether they accept you or not. A sometimes hard and thankless job. Lord, I ask that you strengthen these warriors and give them the fresh bread from heaven each and every day. Let them receive clear instruction from you so that they may guide your people to a closer walk with you. In Jesus' name, amen. morning. My name is Scott Smith, and I'm the president of the Fellowship Chamber, and I would like to honor those in the mountain of education. So I have three children. I know it's a very difficult job, and I couldn't be with my kids patiently all day, so thank you so much. So those in education, if you could please stand. The administrators, teachers, volunteers at school, thank you. Let's pray. Father, we lift these precious men and women up to ask that you favor them, and that your favor fall on them in greater measure. Lord, cover them and advance their knowledge above that of the worldly counterparts. Cause them to be noticed and recognized in supernatural ways that will draw all people to you. Bless them with wisdom and influence that will enable them to break down the secular influence of the enemy in our educational institutions. May the God of wisdom bring his power and knowledge and reign in the world in your midst. Amen. Well, hello, my name is Stephanie Sherwood, and I'm the founder and CEO of the Tapestry Network. We are a ministry that supports Christian women and seekers in the marketplace. And I am honored uh, to pray over the mountains of arts, entertainment, and media. So if you do anything in far, as far as marketing, media, entertainment, social media, anything that you use to get your message out, would you please stand? Yes, be brave. We thank you for your courage to step into an arena that has so many strongholds, but also has such a huge impact on what our world believes. And I'd like you to join me in prayer. Father, bless the men and women in, in these fields. Cover them with more courage and protect them from the influence of the industry while empowering them to bring your truth and power into the light for all to see. Bless them with favor and impact in the right places that they will get to them to the top of those of the mountain. In the name of Christ Jesus, amen. Well, if you guys are like me, you've been kind of looking around to how many. We need some more arts and entertainment, by the way. That's become very apparent. So all of you artistic types. Uh, I have the privilege this morning of praying over those of you who are in the marketplace, which is all of our business people. And you're going to notice as I ask you to stand, if you have a job that you do during the week, uh, you can just go ahead and stand up now. Uh, this is our biggest group. 
Uh, maybe the family one was a little bit bigger. That was pretty broad. But most of you guys are spending a lot of time in the place that you work. And as Gil shared with us this morning, that is a key place to live out your faith. It's a place, a, really a powerful place to make a difference. If we don't, the church has problems. I mean, th- this is something that God has called us to do, to utilize. So I want to pray a blessing over you. If you're sitting down, please just reach out your hand and join me in prayer as we pray over these. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the business place, God. Every person that's standing right now represents a job that is done. Lord, some of us are proud of the job we do. Some of us don't like the job we do. But, Lord, these are the jobs that you gave us. And, God, constantly we're praying for people to have a place of business, a place of work, a place to earn a living, Lord. And each one of these represents an answer to that prayer, Lord. You gave them a place to work. And, Lord, not just a place, but the place. And so, Lord, we ask that each one of these men and women would see their place of work as an opportunity to minister on your behalf, the King of kings and Lord of lords, that they would take all the talents and all the gifts and all the time and energy that you poured into them and through them to the world, Lord, that they would make a difference, that they would go way beyond uh, tithes and offerings and sharing of, of what you've given them in terms of their compensation, Lord, and they would begin to shine their light so brightly in the place of work that they change the office environment. They change the places where they they go and interact with others, whether it's sales or, Lord, whatever business they're in. Lord, these represent thousands of relationships. Lord, would you reach out and touch those thousands of lives through this group of people in Jesus' name. Amen. So once again, I want to thank all of the CBI representatives for coming. There are two blue tents out front that uh, you can go and and visit after the service is over. And we really encourage you to go by and uh, just check in with them, see what they have to offer. Give them some encouragement. They gave up their Sunday to come and love you. And they do great work throughout the week. So go over there and at least check in, see what's going on. Um, Find a way to get encouraged. I believe that CPI is an opportunity to be equipped, and many of you guys need to be better equipped for what God's called you to do in the business marketplace. Uh, You need to be encouraged. Everybody needs encouragement. Even Pastor Dan, believe it or not, I love encouragement. God did not put enough encouragers on this earth, and so the CBI represents a network of people who will encourage you. And then lastly, you need to be admonished. Every once in a while, we just need a kick in the rear. I mean, we can just get off track. We can get lazy. We can get into our own thing. And sometimes you need somebody to admonish you, which is a a Christian word for giving you a kick in the rear and getting you back on track where you need to be. And we all need that as well. So equipping, admonishment, encouragement, these are all things that are available to you this Sunday. And I believe God wants you to take advantage of those things. So if I could ask the worship team to come on up, we're going to end with one song. We also have a prayer team in the back. If there's anything the Lord's speaking to you this morning and you'd like to go for prayer, we encourage you to do that as well. Because God is at work in this congregation, in your life. Your presence here today is an opportunity for you to be blessed with the power of God to change. And so thank you guys uh, again, CBI, for coming. And we just trust God's going to continue to bless you as you do this uh, at all of the churches God has lined out for the future. Amen.